Hey there, this is Danny Sunshine Bauer from Better Leaders, Better Schools, and the School Leadership Series, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual hosts. Make sure you check out all the other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com and get ready because the learning begins in three, two, one. This is episode number 113 of the House of EdTech podcast, and I am not alone. I'm going to do this episode with Kate. Welcome to the House of EdTech podcast. I am your host, Chris Nessie. The House of EdTech explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. I discuss technology that is changing our classrooms and schools, and I share tools and tips that you can hear today and use tomorrow. You're going to hear the stories of teachers, leaders, and creators just like you. The purpose? Whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way you teach and how your students learn. It seems like it's been forever, but really it's been the same two weeks between episodes. Welcome back to the House of EdTech podcast. You know, Kate, you're here. Let's just get kind of right into this because while it's been two weeks since episode 112 came out, which was my Not at ISTE keynote, we've been on an adventure since the last episode came out. Actually, we've been on the adventure of the seas the Royal Caribbean cruise to the Bahamas. I see what you did there. That was very clever. Ah, (laughs) caught me there. Yeah, so we went on a seven-night, eight-day cruise from Bayonne, New Jersey to Port Canaveral, Coco Cay, and Nassau, Bahamas, and just returned a day ago already. It's only been a day. It's only been a day. We left a a week ago. Yes, so we did not take the children with us. They were safe and sound with my in-laws, your parents, and the dogs went to a friend's house, who I hope my friend is still my friend after (laughs) watching our dogs. (laughs) Yeah, so we had our first vacation as a couple in 10 years since our honeymoon that was of the vacation sort. It wasn't traveling and staying with family in Florida or flying to Seattle for a wedding. It was actual focused vacation private time, couple time, do our own thing. 10 years after our honeymoon, our first actual vacation. 10 years after the honeymoon. And I I would say that we have definitely put in a decade of excellence. Yeah, I would say it's been a good, well, it's been a, it's been quite a ride over the past 10 years and we are enjoying our time together. I think we still enjoy traveling together. I think you and I do really well when it's just us or even us and the kids When we're working and back and forth and not seeing each other enough, I think that's where we get stressed out. But I think there's nobody better that I would choose to go on a trip anywhere in the world with than you. I think we always have a really good time and we enjoy each other's company. And we also are flexible where we can let each other go and do what they like to do and not worry about, you know, what the other one's doing. It's like, I think we have a good... A good right. travel. That's the nice way of saying we can go on vacation and we're, we don't have to be all over each other. And But I think even 10 years ago when we used to, you know, or 15 years ago, the first few times we drove to Florida, like we, I think we worked very good together as a traveling couple and figuring out itineraries or plans or doing things or agreeing on things. We never really fight so much on vacation as it's, you know, there's not, I don't know. I mean, we saw quite a lot of people on the boat who were not happy and miserable (laughs) most days and fighting with their spouses or children. So I just feel blessed that we have that type of relationship where we actually thrive very much spending more time together. Now, before we go too much further, there could be a number, any number of people who are new to listening to the House of EdTech and may have no clue who you are. So I will first say that Caitlin is my wife of... (laughs) I hope you took a vacation with your wife. (laughs) Is my wife of over 10 years. We'll be married 11 years uh, this coming September. Let everybody know a little bit about you for those who are new to Kate Nessie. 
I am a high school librarian, so I do work in education. I've been on the podcast a few other times to talk about frugal finance. I also am a podcast host myself of the Lifelong Learning Podcast. And you can find me mostly at katenessie.com where I blog and I write. And I, that's kind of where everything comes together. I used to be a photographer for about a decade. I may, I'm sort of working on opening that back up. Not sure what that's going to look like. And I do many side hustles, so I'm not going to get into it all. But you can kind of see the mishmash of everything that I write about and talk about on katenessie.com. And here you are back again. <laughs> I know this is a topic we have talked a lot about. And we've always wished we've recorded talking about it because we both get very heated and interested in our points of view. So I do wish there were times that we did record the actual conversation because I think I had some really good points and you had some good points. But here we are finally recording the conversation. So today we are going to talk about, and again, this episode has a little bit of a different flavor. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into too many specifics because as I sit here recording this right now, I don't really know what is going to make the episode, if this is going to be a two-part episode, if there are things that I've recorded from vacation that are going to make it. So I make no promises, but I do hope you enjoy this episode. And, you know, be sure to leave feedback or comments via social media, which might sound ironic at this point. Um, or, of course, you can go over to the show notes for this episode at chrisnessy.com slash 113. As the title of this episode kind of indicates to you who's listening, we're going to be talking about social media, any number of aspects that relate to social media that Caitlin and I have discussed the pros, the cons, should we, shouldn't we? And when I say we, it's should she, should she, yeah, easy for me to say, should she, should I? So where, where do you want to start? Where do you want to jump in on this? Well, I'd love to jump in and speak to, well, if you aren't aware, Chris obviously loves social media and loves to be active on Twitter. He stays up all hours and is active on the internet, um, talking to people, chatting with people, following people, um, really engaging with people. I, on the other hand, have always been very cautious of allowing social media to get too into my life and to take over too much of how I look at the world or feel about the world. So I would love to actually ask you, because I think we've talked about trying to, I have no problem moving away from social media. I've removed all apps from my phone. I did that. I, I'll i just give some background. I quit Facebook seven or eight years ago completely. I do check in on your Facebook when my mom says there's a picture of the kids or somebody has posted something, but pretty much it's only when my mom says, hey, go check out Facebook. So I'll look there for something specific. I don't use Twitter or Instagram that often. I have dabbled in it here and there, but I set up on Twitter. I've been with Twitter for 10 years. I use a add-on or an app that's called tweetdelete.net. So it automatically deletes my tweets after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever I set it to do. So you won't find any tweets from me from 2008, but I did start tweeting then. And I like to erase my social history. I don't know. It's just something I don't feel I need a footprint on, even though I know everything is archived on the internet forever. And Instagram, I quit for quite some time. I went back to it in the fall when I trained for a half marathon to stay motivated. It was motivating, but not so motivating. Um, so I can get into that later. So I I exist on Twitter and Instagram as mostly placeholders. Every once in a while, maybe once a month, every couple months, I'll pop in and post a picture. Or Twitter is really just a place where I, I now just kind of circulate my blog and podcast episodes. And I'll check in from time to time just to respond to anything or, or retweet anything or things that people have, you know, wrote to me or sent to me. But my primary way of, I guess, social media, if you would consider it social, is my website and my blog. So for me, that's the only place where I'm actually social, but I don't even love comments and dealing with the social interaction, I guess. So what I would like to ask you, since you are very passionate about everybody being a connected educator, and we've had arguments about this, how was it going an entire week where you did not check in? I felt like you might have had the shakes for the first day or two wondering what was going on out in the world without you. But we on the ship for the uh, eight days, we only had, we had cell phone service the first day 
and we use some data with track phone. So I don't know what you checked. I just checked in pictures with the kids. Then we only had cell phone service one other day, which was I think the third or fourth day of the cruise. We could use cell phone data again, not uh, not any actual internet service. And so again, I checked in pictures with the kids. I didn't really spend my data on anything else. So we only had two opportunities during the trip to kind of be connected in any way. And that was using cell phone data because we did not choose to pay for the internet package on the ship. I refused to pay for that. I'd rather spend the money elsewhere. And the whole point was for us to get away. So how did you feel going an entire week without social media? I can say one thing before you answer. Years For years, I've suggested a no-tech day in our house where we don't pick up devices and we decide to stay off of social media and off of the internet and just spend time as a family and not have phones, iPads, anything, um, you know, computers after the kids go to bed. And you were always against it, against it, against it. And then after this week, probably by day six or seven on the cruise, I mentioned it again because I was listening to a podcast about raising children and you said, yeah, why don't we do Saturdays? That would be perfect. So there was no pushback. So I'm curious to see if anything shifted for you in taking that time off of being on social media in a forced way and not really having a choice to choose to be off of it. Well, for the duration of the trip, I I relished in not being connected before we left. Uh, Feels what, good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, b- before we left on the Thursday, I guess because we left on a Friday. Uh, on Thursday, I had put out a tweet in the afternoon, probably before I left school for the day, that just basically said, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase myself, you know, going on a social media break from, you know, this date to this date, you know, hashtag family time, hashtag summer vacation, uh, whatever the case may be. And I just kind of put it out there. And I was very committed to, y- even you, you know, when we were away, you had suggested oh, maybe we can get the the internet at a reduced rate a couple of days in, you know, be on one device. And I, and I was adamant, at, you know, saying no, even if it was to communicate with the kids or, you know, anything like that. I was just like, no, let's just be disconnected. I just wanted to be able to call the kids or have pictures of the kids. But but at, at the points where we could, you know, check data or, or anything, um, there's not currently any data on my phone. Oh. So I didn't check anything anywhere at any time until we got home the other day and, you know, my phone and my iPad got back on our home network. So Ah, then it all blew up. I was, I mean, sure. There were lots of emails and, you know, tweets. I had 88 emails. I can't believe how many things that I get an email that I thought I had set to go to the trash automatically and didn't. So just want to throw that out there. (laughs) I was shocked. I'm an inbox zero person. So, I mean, it was at zero about an hour later, but, (laughs) uh, but I, I, I was totally fine with it. And one of the reasons I was fine was because uh, my my tweets go to, and we're talking about social media, my tweets from at Mr. Nessie also go to the professional Facebook profile that I maintain that is like a million percent public. Like Mm -hmm. it's just like anything anything I put there, you know, the tweets go there. So that tweet about, you know, taking a social media break and, you know, being on the hiatus uh, Jim Collison from the average guy TV who I'm friends with on Facebook had said basically, you know, if you didn't announce this, would anybody even notice? And really in those couple of hours before we left for the trip, I, I was left thinking who would notice if Some, I took a break or didn't take a break. And I mean, throughout the week I had the automated weather tweets that go out there. Uh, and if you're somebody who listens to the podcast and you've ever responded to my weather tweets, I don't write them every day at 7 a.m. It's automated through if this, then that. Um, but it's just been a nice way around the weather to connect with other weather geeks and, you know, just kind of start conversations. Small talk. And small talk. Water cooler chat about the weather. Um, but I, I don't think anybody knew I was here or there. <laughs> and Nobody cares. It, you know, I, you know, we got home yesterday. I didn't turn my computer on until we sat down to record this today. And did anybody miss you? I had emails. I had some things that people actually specifically yeah, wrote to me. Yeah, you have stuff to but, do, but. You know, I'm not some high profile figure that, you know, I was missing out on a few hundred emails that needed my immediate attention. If you were high profile enough, you'd have somebody to pay to do it for you. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but I, I am a social media army of one. But so you might be listening to this now and say, I didn't even realize you were gone. I was. We were on vacation. Um, 
So, but I think I think we want to talk more about not so much who cares what other people think or what they notice. I mean, because I've gone off of blogging for various time periods. I've gone off of Twitter. I mean, the only time once somebody noticed I had deleted Facebook, um, only because they were a little weird and counted their friend counts. <laughs> and that's why I was like, oh, I'm glad I deleted it because I don't want to be friends with you. You creep me out. I mean, no. you've deleted a number of blogs in the past. I mean, you have. Oh, Kate, yeah. I've, I mean, I've kind of moved around the web uh, quite a bit. So and I've actually had some people who have followed me as I've followed other people who've done the same. But I think we want to talk more about not necessarily what other people think or if anybody noticed, but more about how did you feel during that time? Did you feel like you were missing out? Did you feel like you wished you had it? Or did it, you actually feel more relaxed because it wasn't something that you had to pay attention to? I would say I felt relaxed. Again, I wasn't, you know, jonesing or, you know, itching to, uh-huh. you know, check Twitter. Waiting for notifications. I mean, you figure, okay, this is the house of ed tech. While we were away, ISTE 2018 in Chicago took place. Okay. That's cool. I, I, I ex, you know, that's cool. I wasn't there. Uh, I, I did the whole not at ISTE keynote thing in the last episode. I mean, that was my concert. Contrib- just silly. <laughs> I, again, like, like I said in that episode, it, it's kind of like this podcast. Nobody asked for the house of ed tech. But, but you're going to get it anyway. But you're going to get it anyway. <laughs> uh, same thing for my podcast. Nobody asked for it, but you're still going to hear it anyway, whether or not you want to listen to it. But I think, well, I'm glad to hear that you didn't have any, um, you know, detachment issues and things like that. I do feel that sometimes social media, when you know it's available, it's an automatic habit. Like you pick up your iPad and just look at it. Um, you know, or I used to pick up my phone all the time. When before I had deleted the apps on my phone and just kind of left them out there, you know, it was like, oh, my God, I, I keep picking this up to look for something and there's nothing here. You know, and it was like a little bit of a letdown for a while until like, you know, I've retrained my senses. And then it was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not picking this up. I'm picking up to do something purposefully, not something, Yeah. you know, so. I mean, I, I anticipated when we got home that there would be not necessarily things directed towards me. Just like, things you would be like, paying like, attention Like on to. Voxer. I'm yeah. in a Voxer group with a, a number of other educators who are podcasters. And and I know at least maybe four, five, six of them were at ISTE. And I was yeah. expecting that Voxer chat to be like blown, all up. blown up with like pictures and messages. And yeah, there was like four messages. I was actually kind of disappointed that there was not a lot of chatter. Well, and see that that's where it comes down to, too. Social media. For me, I think of social media as the openness and conversations, I guess, among the public or the world or a larger group of people that you may or may not know. I don't know if I would consider Voxer social media in the sense, I mean, you're connected with different people. I'm connected more with private personal friends and that's how we stay connected. So I think social media can kind of ebb and flow in different ways, depending on what service you're using and how you're using it or how you're choosing to use it. So for me, I've just found over the years that the more I engrossed myself, especially after children, I think it became even more, um, you know, Miles was born six and a half years ago. So I guess during pregnancy and after having him, it really became apparent how much I was picking up my phone, how much I was paying attention to what everybody else was doing and not paying attention so much to what I was doing or living in the moment or enjoying the moment. I know as a new mom at the time, it was very stressful uh, breastfeeding and all that kind of stuff. And, and you see all these things and all these things people write and you just feel like this awful, awful parent, like you're doing every single thing wrong and nothing is working out right. And, you know, parenting is hard. And that first time you have a baby and the first several months, it is rough. And very few people share the fullness of what that experience is. And, you know, when you talk to people one on one or new moms and you have it like you're like sitting at the park and you're like, oh, my God, yes, like I'm with you. I understand where you're at. But on online, it's it's wonderful and beautiful pictures and all these great, wonderful stories. And, and people might share the hard times, but they don't share it until after. So you see all these wonderful things as the baby's growing. And then maybe when they're a year old, people are like, oh, man, it was so rough. Let me tell you about it. But then at that point, you're like, yeah, but I'm seeing this beautiful baby, this beautiful family, you know, all that kind of stuff. So for me, around that time, I started to really notice that. I'd be up at night feeding him and then I'd be on my phone like scrolling through other people's crap. And I was like, what do I care about this? And now I'm feeling bad because I'm not on vacation because I'm up at two o'clock and three o'clock and four o'clock in the morning feeding a baby and I'm sleep deprived. And, you know, so that's when I kind of hit the wall and I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I here? No, none of these people are connected to me in this private, personal way. Um, You know, so that's when I dumped it. 
And Twitter was always just kind of a, a nice, fun way to share, you know, workouts and different things and engage with people from across the world that I didn't have to be personally connected with. On Facebook, I was always specific that I had to know the person that I was friending. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I feel like with social media, in my experience, it hasn't made me feel better about myself or motivated me to do better, but it it almost has become a necessary evil when you have a website or have a blog or have a podcast. Although I do feel like my numbers have grown without really being a social media maven. I don't post really much about my podcast on Instagram. I tried here and there in the past year, but I was like, nah, I don't like being here because I, I post something and then I keep scrolling and then I get sucked into other people's stories. And, uh, same thing, um, with Twitter, you know, I'd, I didn't really, I never really engaged much in Twitter. I, once I quit Facebook, I think I just kind of stepped away from it all and kind of stood back and said, what am I doing here? And I do know people that actually quit Facebook completely too around the same time of having children and whatnot or quit all social media because it literally made them depressed or have anxiety. So, and you know, now of course all these studies are coming out with anxiety and depression and kids and, and how social media is being used. And for me, I'm glad I grew up in a time where I could experience social media and know what it's like to not exist in social media. I mean, when I got my first cell phone, like you couldn't text. I like, I couldn't even call on it because I didn't have a service when my car broke down like two miles away. (laughs) So I just think of like, you know, I know what it's like to not be connected and have to rely on your senses or, or, you know, skills to engage with other people and, you know, go knock on a door and use a phone. Um, you know, whereas I feel like kids now don't have that experience and I'm trying to make sure that our kids, I mean, they're not old enough for social media at this point and I do hope that they don't use it in the future, but, or that may be a rule, (laughs) but I hope that they can learn those skills that we were able to learn without all of this chatter. I feel like social media is a lot of noise. There's a lot, a lot of noise and when you're doing websites, I mean, and you know what? Everybody uses it for different things. A lot of people I've interviewed on my show, it's been nice to hear where they say, I only focus on this one or I'm only focusing on that one. And, you know, and they move around and throughout because you never want to put all your business into one company because like Facebook changed their page rules and business rules and everything like that. I was a great place where I got a lot of business for photography. And then all of a sudden, bam, I've got to pay or one person's going to see my stuff out of. A thousand. Well, actually, let me jump in and say that, you know, from what I've learned in the journey I've, I'm on as a podcaster, they talk about, oh, you know, what social media platform is best for promoting podcasts? That's a question that comes up a lot in some of the Facebook groups <laughs> that I'm in. And the, the sentiment that always comes out is don't be everywhere and kind of be mediocre and have a mediocre presence. If you're going to be on a couple of platforms, be on those platforms. Be somebody who's going to interact. So, you know, I have Twitter, have Instagram, I have a Snapchat account, you know, I don't do anything with it. You know, I'm trying to do, you know, I I have Instagram, you know, for personal purposes, but I have, you know, at House of Ed Tech on Instagram, you know, I don't connect with people professionally on Instagram through my personal thing. So I try and put these divisions in, you know, for myself. Um, Are there those of you who are listening who have found me on Instagram and you follow me? Sure. I'm sorry if I haven't followed you back. It's just that I don't know you. So I I do kind of, I I draw those lines for myself, you know? So if you want to connect, you know, with, you know, the podcast, you know, it's there at house of ed tech. I don't know. Well, I think, I mean, for example, so there's various different types of social media and different forms of social media. So I look at, these are the different types of social media I've engaged in. I've been on Facebook since it started uh, we were just out of college then, so that was kind of funny. I think it's, at one point we were both on Facebook, then off of Facebook, and then back onto Facebook. Yes, yeah, we were we we had left it um, for a while there because we oh we did MySpace way back in the day. Yeah, um, that was the early days. We did Facebook as college students, uh, post college students when you could only use a school email. Then we left it, and then we went back. Um, then we were. I've used Twitter. I've used Instagram, Pinterest. Uh, YouTube, which I guess is considered a social media, although I feel like YouTube is very useful for so many things that I don't consider it social media so much as a learning platform in the way that I use it. And there's a number of other things. I haven't really, I didn't, I don't do Snapchat. Anything that comes up anymore, I don't even sign up for. I can't be bothered. Pinterest, I had a lot of really great stuff. I deleted it. 
uh, because I didn't really go back there. Like I had all these wonderful recipes. Great. I'm not going to Pinterest to find the recipe to go to the website that no longer works because right, it was, but we also now live, right. Well, that, that's another big thing with something like Pinterest go there and you know, the links are Most dead of it's, or it's just pictures. Yeah. It's, it's not as, or you do it and it functional. doesn't look anything like <laughs> yeah, is or, pictured. or you see the pictures, you know, I mean, I'm sure everybody's found a Pinterest recipe or a DIY hack and they followed the thing and then it like did not turn out the way that it appeared on Pinterest and you're like, wait, what? So there's been many times where I have made recipes and I was like, this is disgusting. Like, what is this joke that somebody put together? So anyway, um, you know, so I've deleted Facebook. I've deleted Pinterest. I exist on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I've never really put up much other than a video or two. Um, eventually I feel like I'd like to create content there just because I like video content. I worked as a video editor. I worked in television. So there was a lot of different things that I enjoy doing that you know, when when I have more time and the kids are older. But one thing I like about podcasting, I don't know if it would be considered a social media because you're just kind of putting content out there. But I don't feel like you have to even be on social media to have a really amazing podcast. You can create, I mean, not that I have an amazing podcast, but you can create amazing content and people find you and then they share you. And there's all of that like word of mouth thing, which we always mention on our podcast to share word of mouth of what you're interested in. If you go to the early days of podcasting, you know, 2003, 2004, no Twitter, no YouTube, no Facebook in its infancy, MySpace in its infancy, you know, I mean, but I I think, and I'm going to speak for me, I, I think I need these platforms to better market and promote the content that I'm creating, you know, doing, I'm doing more with Instagram, you know, with the stories and, you know, trying to make the profile, you know, look a certain way and take advantage of some of the features of Instagram. But I think if you're, so for me with that, I go back to, I can play on Instagram, I can play on Twitter, I can promote, 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 or I can spend that time making really good podcasts or content and not worry about that because other people will promote it. I think of people, for me, not that I'm ever going to make money from blogging or being you know, an internet famous person by any means, you know, it's a side hustle. It's something I enjoy doing. It's something I enjoy creating. But I think with my blog, like I compare it to a Steve Pavlina or a Seth Godin where they're not on social media. They're not on Twitter. They're not engaging with people in there because they're focusing on the content that they're creating and they're focusing on this other work that they're doing. Yes, they sell books. They have, you know, workshops and individual courses and all that kind of stuff. And although Seth Godin now has a podcast, which is awesome. Um, I think somebody here has asked questions on the podcast. Yes. If you listen to Seth Godin's podcast, Akimbo, you'll actually hear, I've asked questions, I think the third or fourth podcast in, I'm on there. And then actually in their little intro to the questions, if you see her, if you hear, I'm Caitlin, that's me. They used my little audio clip there. So every time I listen, I'm like, yay, I'm still in there. Um, Cause I'm a loser like that. So anyway. No, you're Caitlin. (laughs) I'm Caitlin. Um, so I think I think of people like Seth Godin, Steve Pavlina, and other people who, you know, are just creating amazing content and really great stuff and useful stuff that they're not having to hustle everything because people just come to them for what they create. And that's kind of what, I mean, not that I'm creating amazing things, but I want to focus on what I'm doing, writing, creating, or for me right now, as I've stepped back from even blogging as much regularly and, you know, since I've added the podcast in, I'm focusing more on my family and my kids. I'm focusing more on what I'm doing in my house, what I'm doing in my job, what I'm doing in my community, you know, getting involved in the PTA and all of these other local things that while it's great to be on social media and share all these things, I don't feel like I have to constantly self-promote myself in that way because my focus and my role in my work and in my life is I'm here to help and I'm here to help people. So the more that I just am able to be out helping people, the better I'm able to connect, I guess, in that way. And for me, there's more of a personal connection. I've always been a one-on-one person. I've always been enjoyed that versus going out with a large group of people. So for maybe for me, social media is more of like that large party I don't really want to hang out at. And, you know, having an individual conversation or interaction with people, you know, but again, social media comes into play with a podcast because meeting people in person, they want to connect via social media or stay connected with you, or you find people that you're interested in through social media to, in, you know, bring on the podcast or talk to or learn from. You make that point, uh, you know, if not for the podcast, for me and for social media, you know, I've forged some great 
relationships and friendships with people in the last five years, you know, because of putting out the show. And I don't think if, if not for social media, I don't know if I would have the listener base that I do have now because of people oh, yeah. who, who have shared it. That's why I have no listener base. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned, you know, Seth Godin. Seth Godin was Seth Godin before. I know his he was podcast. he was Seth Godin back like when Typepad came out. Like he was he's old school. You know, for somebody who's um, launching a podcast, you know, if if you, well, there's a lot of noise out there, so you have to cut through the noise. You have and to try cut through and, the noise, and if if you've if you've been a blogger or you've been an author, you know, and you've got that following or that tribe, I'll, I'll use Seth's words to support mm-hmm. my case. <laughs> you know, if you've got that tribe and you're going to come and create new content in a different way, you, people are going to follow you. Well, so I have a love hate relationship with social media. It's it's a necessary evil in my life only just because of, like you said, the connections, the people you meet. You know, there are a lot of people I've stayed connected with over the years, you know, through it. And I don't I don't hate social media, but I don't love the way it makes me feel. And I don't love the way that it can invade my personal life and invade my private space. And I'm very guarded. Let let me cut in there. What don't you like? Let's break this down. Well, I don't like the way. we can go back and forth on this. Sure. I don't like the way it makes me feel when I see everybody out there enjoying wonderful vacations and perfect families dressed perfectly as I've, you know, had ice cream dumped on me or a beer spilled on me at a party from a kid knocking over something. And, you know, everybody has their wonderful pictures, the right angles, you know, and I know the right angles. I took the pictures for people, you know, so when I put up a photo, you have this moment of like, okay, I have to make sure I look good. I have to make sure the family looks perfect. I have to make sure, you know, this moment in time is captured and and the story that goes with it is wonderful. So I don't like the way it makes me feel and that I have to present a certain aspect of myself because it's never the full story. I don't like the way it makes me feel when I scroll through and see everybody's wonderful experiences if I'm having a bad day and I'm not having a wonderful experience. And I also don't like the fact that it's not honest and it's not true. There's so many people that I know personally or have had conversations with where you'll see wonderful photos and a great, you know, vacation. I mean, you know, we're talking here, we had a great vacation, but um, we really did though. We did have a great vacation, but like you'll see great vacations or something like that, or or just all these wonderful pictures. And then like, I'll go have dinner with somebody and they're like, yeah, I go to see my therapist four times a week. I'm on antidepressants. I can't, you know, it's hard to get out of bed every day. I'm fighting with my husband or I'm uh, going through a divorce or, and you're like, wait, what? You just had this really amazing like trip to Prague and did all these wonderful things or, you know, or. Or I don't know, you tweet about work being so wonderful. And then like here you hate this person who, you know, drives you mad. So for me, sometimes it just gets frustrating because we all have, you know, you can't have the the great moments without the bad moments. But social media is heavily curated. And, and that's kind of the way it's designed. It's, it's designed to be a alternate reality. It's not really the truth of what people are experiencing. And I almost feel like even when people are sharing those down moments or what they're experiencing. It's almost like a way of like, you know, cause we all know people who share that all the time. And then you're like, Oh gosh, you just constantly want attention. So I just don't like the way it makes me feel. And I don't like the way that it, it makes me uh, form an opinion or think about a person in a certain way or, or think worse about myself because somebody has this image that they're creating. So I just try to not, See, and I, this is like over 10 years I've noticed. Right. But, but I, I can relate to that because I also a lot of times don't like the way it makes me feel. But again, I'm, I'm using social media in a different way, you know, in, in my, in our profession, in education, but there's times in, I but have there are ways and there, there are people who, you know, they tweet and I'm just like, in, they like make me feel like crap. There are people that in, in the profession that tweet about stuff and sometimes, you know, they're full of BS and, you know, they get all this attention and whatever else. And then you you sit there and you you feel bad about yourself. And we've had those conversations where I'm like, listen, they're full of it. You know, or there's certain people where it's like, they'll be found out. Don't worry. Like, like the truth will come out. This is not real. This is, doesn't exist. Or there's times where people get all excited about something. And then when you actually get down to the nitty gritty and say, hey, who wants to do this with me? And no one, you know, says, yeah, cool. Awesome. Like, well, like they're full of crap. So for me too, I guess I don't, I don't like, I'm a very honest person. So I don't love being on social media, especially Twitter where it's like, Oh my God, tweet hashtag. Woohoo. Yeah. I'm awesome. Well, I mean, I, th- I think we can both agree that, you know, 
education and Twitter is a lot of people holding back because we're we're public employees. Well, well we I think people hold back in the sense of uh, you know adult personal whatever experiences, but I also think people promote and heavily promote themselves for things that people in the classroom or in the library do every day and don't promote themselves. Like you always talk about the connected educator and I know I go against you on this, but I'm sorry, I do a really awesome job and I get awesome feedback from the people I work with and I don't tweet about it. I don't post pictures about it. I don't go crazy about it. And I'll tell you what, every job I've walked into and had an interview, I've gotten the job and I've switched jobs a lot because I like change and I like to do different things. So maybe I sound overconfident, but I always feel like my work speaks for itself as well as what I do. You know, so for me, I don't, I, Twitter has never gotten me a job. Twitter has never helped me get a foot in the door. Facebook hey, has hey, never. <laughs> me either. Yeah. For all of the time and energy and effort I put into this. I know. You know, I walk into interviews and they don't know who Chris Nessie is. They don't know who the house of ed tech they is. They don't Google you. I mean, I, I used to walk in when I had a photography business and I thought, okay, great. This person's going to know I'm into photography. And we'd start talking and they're like, oh, oh, you do that? Like that would have been the first hit on Google. Like. You didn't click on it. You didn't even Google me. So I just think, you know, the way I've gotten jobs is the work that I do. I've actually don't think I've ever gotten a job through a connection in any way, which is kind of funny now that I think back on my career. Uh, and some jobs I've actually gotten and they love me. And my prior employer called to complain about me because they were so pissed I left. <laughs> so I just look at the fact of, you know, you don't have to be on social media to do a good job, to be good at what you do, whether, you know, you're a teacher, uh, you know, a librarian, an administrator, you don't have to be out in the world, like shelling rah, rah, look at me, look at me, look at what I did. You know, like I had a Google certification way before all these people on Twitter had Google certifications, but I didn't tweet about it. I didn't put a little badge on my website. I didn't go crazy of like, look at me, look at me, I'm doing this. And then I was like, oh, this is useless because I already do this and no job cares that I have the certificate. Like, so just for me, like education, I can't be bothered with any of that on Twitter. I was just on the uh, Aced.Tech podcast, Android Chrome Education podcast. You can find Ooh. it at uh, Aced.Tech. Um, but I was on that podcast with uh, with Mr. G, episode six, and we, we talked about the Google certifications. And I basically admitted publicly, and I'll admit it here on this show for the first time, really, you know. We didn't want to pay the $10 for it. They're not worth it. I have one. They actually just emailed me while we were on vacation that had expired. <laughs> and I was like, that's great. I could care less because I help people every day. I've been doing Google. I mean, what did we have? Gmail and beta. I mean, you, I think you invited me to Gmail when it first came out. Like, that's how, like, you had to get in. And so, I mean, I've been with them for since the beginning. I don't have any aspirations to go work for Google. I don't have, you know, aspirations to do all these other things. So, for me... Sometimes I feel, too, with education, a lot of the people that become Twitter stars or whatever rock stars in, in the social media universe in that area are, you know, maybe they're doing it because they have aspirations. Like, I can't say that it's, you know, everybody's silly for doing it. But maybe, you know, it, to me, it seems like they're doing it to promote themselves so that they can grow and maybe not work in education anymore. A lot of times it seems like a lot of people move to consultant jobs and work for other companies. So I don't know if maybe people are using it to and move on from it. I'm very happy in what I do and I love what I do. So for me, I'm just going to keep doing what I do no matter what library I'm in or what experience I'm in. You know, I've worked in television. I've worked in all sorts of different places and, and careers. So for me, I'm like, listen, I'm just here to help and I love to do what I do and help other people. So for me, I guess I don't feel the need to have to constantly put that out there. And I'm also cautious, too, about working in public employment and putting stuff on the Internet. There's, you know, you always have moments where you might say something stupid. We see that all the time happen to people, um, you know, or they live in a fantasy world on their Internet profiles. But, yeah, so for me, I guess, I mean, I'm not hating on all the people who promote themselves. That's great. It's just not a universe I want to live in. And I don't think that every educator that has to be a connected educator to be a good educator. No, I think, I, And I would say definitely not because... The quote unquote connected educator, that is such a small percentage of people. Oh, absolutely. Compared there's, to all the educators. Oh, yeah. There's very small amount of this country worldwide. Yeah. You know, there are still teachers who, you know, they have problems turning on a computer. But that, I mean, that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, 
I think of like social media, like you talk about for the PLN or the PLC, depending on, you know, how people phrase it and what their school does. You know, for a while it was, it was useful for the PLN, but then it became, there was like too much stuff and too many people will follow you and then you follow them back. And then it's like, I don't want to see all this stuff. I don't want to be a part of all this stuff. I'm not interested, but I don't want to offend people. So for me, it just became just this noisy, noisy, noisy place. And I didn't want to be a part of the noise. And I also didn't want to sit there and feel like, do I need to keep tweeting? Do I need to keep writing? Do I need to keep saying this so that somebody else hears me, sees me, notices me. So when I started to move away from social media completely after leaving Facebook and then a few years later, kind of really deleting Twitter and uh, deleting Instagram photos and kind of clearing house and even my blog, I had deleted my blog one year, um, everything. I do have a printed book of it, but I don't have the website archives or anything. So I look at all of those times. And I think the more that I started to focus inward and focus on what life I want to live and not what life I need to live for the world to approve of, I guess. So for me, social media has become this place of not always a positive place. I think we all have noticed that and not always the best place for your mental health. Although there are great places to connect and and ways and things to find out about things. I think you know, obviously information on the internet is amazing and, and resources on YouTube and learning, but it's a place where I choose to try and decide and really focus on how I want to use it, when I want to use it and where I want to use it versus every time, you know, when I was on Instagram and, and training for the half marathon, like I'd go for a run and, and every run was focused on like, I've got to get a picture during this run so I can post it to Instagram. Otherwise I it didn't count towards my training. So once I stopped doing that, right, if you didn't take a picture, the run didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So once I stopped focusing on sharing it on Instagram and I kind of moved past my, you know, 90 day experience. And then I did another 30 day trial of picture day kind of thing. And it was like so nice. Cause I could just run and I could come home and I could enjoy the run and write it on my little paper notebook that I switched to. Cause I stopped even using like daily mile and writing stuff on the internet and it, it was like old times. It was like, oh, I just went for a run. I didn't have a watch on. I wrote it on paper. Like, and it still happened and nobody really cares either way. So I guess for me, it's just the more I focused on managing my time and deciding how I wanted to use my time and how I wanted to present myself to my students or to our children or you know, to the, to the community of, you know, I'm not this person who's on my phone standing at the pickup line. I'm not this person who's got to check in or check there or check this. You know, I mean, there's a lot of times people know they text me. I'm not going to get back to you right away. A lot of times people don't even call me because they know I'm not going to answer the phone because typically my phone sits in the kitchen all day unless I'm using a recipe or I need to search something and, you know, and now even we were playing with the Google shopping list. So I don't even have to pick up my phone and add stuff to my shopping list anymore. I just say, hey, Google, put this on my shopping list. And then I don't even have to worry about picking up my device in order to remember a few things that I don't want to forget to pick up at the store. Um, you know, so for me, it's like really, I and I've shared a picture of my phone on my website before, but all of my apps are in folders. There's only four Uh, sections across the top. So I have three sections of folders and then there's overcast because I like to just quickly be able to listen to podcasts. So for me, my device is I've, I've kind of put it back to being something like a Palm pilot, (laughs) (laughs) a note taking recipe storing podcast, you know, and place for learning. There's no social media other than YouTube. And usually I don't check in there at all. I have no notifications at all for anything other than text messages and phone calls. I don't get notifications for emails or anything else. That's just, it's all, you know, if I pick up my phone, it's, it's, it's a conscious choice versus, and, and this is coming from, I used to be not consciously using it. So for me, I was, you know, not always this aware of and in control of my choice and use. There was a time where literally things would ding, bing, beep, light up, you know, glow. And, you know, I'd pick it up in the middle of the night to look at it. So for me, I think having children, I think changed my perspective just from what I experienced as a new mom and being on the internet and, and that feeling. But then also, you know, what, what type of world do I want to present to them? You know, we've been out to dinner and seen so many people, even on the cruise. I mean, all these people paid for internet for their kids to be on iPads when we're like in the Bahamas at a beach. I was like, no, like put the iPad down, go snorkeling in the water. We did it old school style. We went to the fancy dinners each night and we sat there in silence. 
<laughs> no, we just sit in silence, but we did come up with some interesting conversation topics. Um, I, I guess maybe since we've had kids, I've really focused on how am I presenting myself and how am I showing uh, what I would like my children to remember me or experience me as. And I know I joked with you a lot of times when Miles was a baby that he was going to draw you as a blockhead because it was going to have the little Apple logo with the iPad in front of you <laughs> in your head because you always had your iPad up. So... For me, I just, I really don't want to be that person and, you know, and, and hey, listen, everybody picks up their phones for a different reason. Somebody might be on their phone, you know, in the pickup line to maybe they're still at work and that's their quick break. They can go see their child or something like that. You know, there's, there's all sorts of reasons, but you know, we, we, you and I both know people personally that, you know, live on their phones and never leave their phones or even go to a family event and they sit on their phones. I am that person. Like you just said, you know, with the iPad. (laughs) I mean, I, I divide my time between my, my phone and my iPad mini. I don't keep all the same social apps on both devices. Yeah. But um, so for me, like, I just try to focus on being where I am and not worrying about taking the picture to prove that I was there. I mean, even the Bahamas, I was like, okay, I'll post a picture of clouds over the water just because pretty much I would say 90% of the people that know us didn't even know we went on vacation. And that included family and friends. Like most people had no idea. I don't even think, I, I if, if we looked at, the combined pictures now, now Grant, you took a lot of, you know, you did the moon and the sun. Oh and the yeah. I got sun, sunrise, sunrise sunset. But like just having the phone out and take, take your, take your nice camera out of the equation. Okay. Cause that's yeah. actually photography with a purpose. Yes. You know, between the two of us, I don't think on our cell phones, we took a hundred pictures. Oh gosh. No. Like maybe 50? we weren't documenting everything. I wasn't no. selfieing. I, my phone stayed locked up in the safe. Well, and I can tell you too, if, I was on social media. I could tell you right now, I would have been documenting and I would have been itching to post it so that I could tell the world that I was on vacation because I was finally one of those people on vacation (laughs) when everybody else was still at work. But again, for the time that we were away, I didn't care. And I come back, you know, refreshed. I mean, I spent, we were away for seven days and I spent five of those seven nights sitting at the piano bar on the ship. Oh yeah, you love that. You know, and, and I... I really enjoyed, I, I didn't think about anything. I didn't think about this podcast. Um, no offense to you who's listening. I didn't think about you at all while I was away on vacation. <laughs> he tried to get me to podcast on the boat and I was like, uh, no, I'm going to sit here and just enjoy listening to it, you the know, water. I, I, I will say now that I will include before this episode is done, S- we've recorded a little segment from the side of the ship and I will include that after yeah, this conversation. I was not interested. <laughs> and, and and that's fine. I mean, you, you said yeah. your piece, which I think was even a little bit about this. Um, but Hey, you know, we, we were away. I was unplugged. It it felt good to unplug. And, you know, here, as I go through, you know, the next, you know, two months of summer vacation, you know, before September, 2018, you know, I have a couple of conferences that I'm planning on going to. One is podcast related. Thank you, dear, for sending me to podca- for approving the purchase, <laughs> for approving the purchase, for sending me to podcast movement at the end of July. Uh, but there's a couple of little one day things, you know, here and there. Um, but other than that, you know, it's it's you, it's the monkey, it's the crab, and uh, swimming projects. And and, and, and I, I was busy today. I'll, I'll I'll document that in future summer episodes. Um, now, what I think was interesting about us recording this episode is you have not, after a week off of it, which you, it seems to have changed your, I guess vision expectation plans or just how you feel about being on your device and on social media or always active and always aware of because three weeks ago we had this conversation you were you were very adamant about how this is something you needed to be a part of and people should be on there and they need to be active and and i feel like over the years we've had such conversations and arguments you know at the table i i think that people in, in education should still leverage a twitter or an Instagram. And again, I'm going to borrow from Seth Godin, find your tribe, connect with people who bring you value. You know, I'm going to give some serious consideration to the thousand plus people that I follow on Twitter who I don't know. And you provide me with no value. Like I, I followed you, you follow, I like, I don't know why I follow half the people. Well, that's if I, I really would knock it down, I could probably get it to under a hundred. Well, and I always used to go back to before I quit Facebook is they always say you only ever know 100 people close in your life. Like that's the only amount that you never know. So as you bring someone in, usually people fall away. 
And on Facebook for the longest time before I quit it, for probably two or three years prior to quitting Facebook, I actually required my Facebook friend limit to no, never go above 100. So for me, if I wanted to add a new friend, I had to find somebody else to remove. And I know that seems harsh, but for me, it was like, I'm never going to know that many people so intimately or personally as you're going to be on that type of space with me. So that's the same reason why I don't go crazy following people who follow me on Instagram or Twitter or anywhere else. If you look interesting or somebody I want to learn from or experience something from, I'll follow you. But even that, like over time, I, I have to clean house because sometimes I love the real housewives. So sometimes I end up following them and then I would get sucked into like, what's going on? You know, so now I just wait for the season to come out and not know what's going on until it, it occurs. I just feel in our conversation, I've noticed that you have not been as passionate or as adamant about your need to be available and on social media all day. I feel like the vacation actually was a good thing for you. Tomorrow, you're not going to pick up your device first thing in the morning and you're not going to have to check Twitter all day. Well, you might because your podcast is coming out, but you know, you're not going to be hyper aware and on and checking and doing as much as you were. And you might actually focus more on, you know, not that you didn't focus on your family before, but more on the the family and the projects and maybe going to bed early and, you know, taking care of your own health and doing things for you and less for the greater world. And and with that, I know I said I'm all about helping people and there's so much help you can offer online. But I always think of, you know, the more I can help a person locally or in my, you know, person to person or things like that is more for me. Of course, if I've asked a question, email, you know, I get all sorts of emails and things. Uh, I'm happy to send people resources and and help them and and guide them however I can. But so with that said, like I understand like a lot of people do a lot of helping on the Internet and that's where a lot of helping occurs. So, you know, if that's where you want to be, that's where you want to be. But I always think I always just say to people, listen, assess its value in your life. Assess what is it providing for you? Is it making your life better? Is it improving your life? Is it helping you connect with the right people and the people you want to learn from or grow from? Or is it bringing you down? Is it dragging you down? Is there stress coming from it? Do you feel icky? You know, are you addicted to your phone where you're literally only taking pictures so you can post them to the internet? You know, and and maybe that's a time to reassess and, and really focus on what you're doing. You know, you can decide where it fits in your life. And, and if social media is something that you do need to have for a business or, or something else or something you want to grow, like... Like you said, focus in one area, like you're, you know, trying this and trying that, and trying that, you know, focus in one area that's going to help your business grow and, and shift it over time. You know, I think of the YouTube stars, like that is their social media, but then a lot of them are everywhere else. Well, you know, maybe it's important for their video to be tweeted on Twitter, but for them, it might be better to have an Instagram story or a video to promote it and get people over, it. you know, so, you that's, know, depending I mean, on how many people you have to do it for that's you. That's like the guy we met. On the ship, Lance Lipinski from yes, uh, Million Dollar Quartet. Yes, you know he. I, I look. I, I don't think he uses Twitter for himself or the band. You can connect with the band and what he's doing on Instagram. Yeah, and he's uh, the Lovers dot com. So we'll check him out too. As he said, it's like the Beatles, but it's the Lovers. Yes, and he actually. Um, he shares a lot of my views, so I'm hoping to maybe see if I can get him to come on the show. I know he's out traveling, uh, doing cruises and things like that, so I don't know what type of internet access they have. But but yeah, I just think it, I feel like social media is, as an adult, you need to be responsible with it to provide an example, especially for students and engaging with it. And so for me, I always look at, you know, how am I being the example to my children, other people's children? you know, out to dinner or whatever, where we can, you know, focus on the moment and be here in the moment. I think we've lost a lot of that. And I think a lot of that is how we as a species, you know, as humans connect, we we thrive on that personal connection. And, and when you're spending it all online, it's not really as personal as you think it is. And I feel, you know, I didn't do research for this podcast. I had hoped to, but I didn't realize we were doing it right now. But, you know, there are, you know, obviously we've all seen studies about, you know, how it affects mental health and everything else. So I just think if it is something that's bothering you or, you know, maybe take a step back and think about it, step away from it. Or if you find you're only taking a picture so you can post it online, maybe kind of ask yourself why you're taking the photo, it, you know, because there's so many cool things that we do that like sometimes I'm like, ah, I should be on the Internet and I could share all this and we'd be really awesome people. But instead I say, wait a minute, this is just for us to enjoy. It, it kind of makes me appreciate the 
and this really goes to YouTube, appreciate people who take the time to not only make amazing things, some of the content that I watch with the woodworking and oh, you know, yeah. the DIY projects, not only are they making and doing cool things that teach people, they're taking the time to film it, edit it, produce it, and you know, put it out into the world. So but that, that goes back to the great I, I have content. Great respect for that. That goes back to the really great content. They are not sitting on Twitter talking about silly things and wasting their time or, you know, whatever. They're creating amazing content and then promoting it. So, you know, it is a business model. It is something that you can do. But I also think for most people, it's not their business. And, you know, there was a study that just came out. The gig economy is no longer or (laughs) it's not growing as they had planned for it to grow. So, I mean, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with just having a day job and not being on the Internet and connecting with people via text in you know, phone calls and dinners and walking down to the park and running into your neighbors and having a conversation, you know, and, and I can say from experience, you know, when I got onto social media and got really into social media, I did get a little weird for a while. Like I didn't want to talk to neighbors and I didn't want to get to know people. And it was like, Oh my God, I can't give them my name. Like, you know, it, it got a little weird to have that personal interaction. And, you know, now, you know, our kid goes to our neighbor's house and asks about her vacuum and <laughs> is vacuuming houses on our neighbor you know, neighbor's houses in our block, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, we're walking into somebody's house. Whereas a kid, I literally, you know, one of who I called my second mom, uh, Mary Ann, she, I walked into her house every day. I didn't even knock. I just walked in. She had a candy drawer. I got some candy. I mean, who does that anymore where their neighbor just has a candy drawer for some kid next door? Like literally I just, every day after school, walk in, Hey, how are you? Oh, okay. You know, got my butterfinger, my fifth Avenue. So should that be the takeaway from today's conversation that you should have a candy drawer for the local youth? I guess I must have, I guess I need to get a candy drawer, but you know, so I just think, I just think like, you know, as a kid, it didn't phase me at all to just talk to strangers and have that experience. And, and, you know, I think for a while, you know, we've gotten away from talking to strangers and you have to be wary of people. But, uh, one thing I had read once was about being street smart, like knowing when it's right to go with someone, talk to someone, interact with someone and, and to have, you know, so anyway, I don't want to spend my time on my phone and on social media and interacting with the rest of the world. I want to spend it with my kids so that they know, you know, when, when they go to a restaurant and somebody by the bathroom asks them to walk somewhere with them, they can know in their gut, this isn't the right decision to make, you know, but yet when they're somewhere and they're lost, they know they can go and knock on that door and and get some help, you know? So for me, I'd rather not have my nose in my phone and, you know, or have them on a device and them focused on that kind of stuff and, and really make it more about, I guess, the experience that we've had. Cause I think that made a big difference in how we handle things with mental toughness and, you know, just, just getting through some of the hard parts of life. And, and, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not in love with social media. It's something I love to hate and I hate to love it. <laughs> well, I tell you something, I, I don't know if I love social media. But I am a fan. I am a supporter. But I think you will see a shift. And you as well, who's listening, will will start to see a shift from me and how I leverage and utilize Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and, and all of these different places. Uh, obviously, as we kind of finished up talking about YouTube, you know, this podcast is my YouTube. You know, this is a way that I've connected with so many people, some of you who have reached out to me. And, you know, you might be someone who's listening who has never tweeted me or never interacted with me, but, you know, you listen to every episode of the podcast or you've gone back to listen to every episode, which I do apologize for if you've gone way back into the archive. Um, But in in terms of this conversation, I have loved genuinely, like I I have preached to people, sit down, hit hit the red record button and have a conversation. This is this is not prepared. No, no I have no notes. I wanted notes, but I have no notes. We we can talk about this again. We have all summer and, and just so everybody knows the kids are in bed and we made the conscious decision to spend our Saturday night sitting down. Aren't we so cool? We, we are so cool. <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to Instagram this photo of us sitting here. Woo-hoo, no. Look at us. We're podcasting on a Saturday night in the summer because we're like <laughs> sports center anchors. We don't have there pants. I mean, no, we have pants on. <laughs> and, and I can circle back around to the beginning. Will anybody even notice if you're not there? I mean, really, nobody noticed about me. Well, um, here's so where I can connect with I the people who are say. listening who have l- listened to this entire conversation. Don't tweet me about this episode. Don't vox me about this episode. If you'd like to talk about this episode, go to chrisnessy.com slash 113 and leave a comment 
about this episode, and that's where we will conduct the conversation. Mostly because Kate's not going to check Twitter if you tweet yeah, her. Nope. But I you can, can get always... her to go to my show notes page and maybe chime in, leaving comments in a threaded you discussion. You can always try and tweet me and then see how long it takes me to get back to you. <laughs> you could play that game, <laughs> you too. You could try that experiment. How long but... does it take to get a tweet back from at Kate Nessie? Yeah, it could be a week. It could be a month or two. Um, but you'll see tweets go out from my blog because I have an automatic tweeter thing. But Tweeter? It, Twitter? Twitter, <laughs> Twitter? I don't know. Twitter, Twitter. Who came up with these silly names for all these things? I don't know. Yeah, so if you want to check me out, katenessie.com, or you can always try and subscribe to the Lifelong Learning Podcast. It's where I've lately been interviewing a lot of people, but the premise of the show is just things that I'm learning, people I'm talking to, things I want to learn more about. So check that out there. There's some cool content that I've created on, you know, anything from fermenting yeast for breads to talking about frugal finance and all sorts of good stuff. So check me out there. You can always check out my blog, katenessie.com and leave a comment there. I will check comments there. Um, I wouldn't say regularly, but usually like once a week, I kind of check in and go, oh, oops, I got a comment. Let me respond to that. So check it out. Leave me some comments. And uh, if you want to talk more to me, you're always welcome to shoot me an email, kate at katenessie.com. And that's usually where I interact most socially in the world. Awesome. Thank you for being on this episode, my dear. I'm just really glad that I think the trip shifted your mindset. This has been a great conversation because I was excited. This was a whole day where you didn't pick up your iPad all day long. So, And I've seen actually your Twitter popping up as we sit here on your iPad. So I think... Uh, that makes one of us because I've been looking at you and a well, little bit on the clock. I'm I facing at the you. Screen. It's kind of to the side there. But <laughs> I can just say that... You know, I think I think it's been an interesting conversation, not the one I expected, considering what we've talked about in the past. So, so yeah, if you're on social media, go for it. If you don't love it and you like podcasts instead, just listen to the podcast. You don't have to be on social media. There are a lot of people who are doing very well without it. So there you go. And hey, listen, I just listened to, you know, like a short podcast about the news to get my updates. So that, And really, it's just so I can have conversation with people. <laughs> I don't even watch the news or listen to that stuff much either because the news is old. It's already happened. I want to know what's going to happen. What are we going to do about it? So anyway, that's all I've got to say. Thanks for listening and thanks for learning right alongside us. Sure. Thanks for learning right alongside us. And you'll hear that in other episodes of Kate's podcast. Again, the Lifelong Learning Podcast. Caitlin, thank you for being a part of this conversation. And uh, the rest of the episode, I will take care of a little bit later. Let's go watch some TV. So it's actually now the next day as I finished the conversation with Caitlin last night. So I'm totally dating this episode. Finished recording the conversation, went downstairs to watch some TV, and I fell asleep on the couch. And that's okay. Because this is a podcast, and while I don't, need, I don't need to tell you this, I just feel compelled to share with you the fact that, you know, I didn't stay up and, you know, lose sleep over the fact that the episode wasn't done. It's okay. A, months from now, it, this part of the episode doesn't really make a difference. But I just wanted to share with you that I am being much more intentional. And now, as I promised just a few minutes ago in this recording, but yesterday in real time, uh, I'm going to now share with you some recording that I made or a recording that I made while I was on the Royal Caribbean Adventure of the Seas cruise ship. So now I'm going to throw it over to myself. So here I am. So, yeah, so I am here on the... <laughs> Royal Caribbean cruise. I am on the Adventure of the Seas ship. It is the Wednesday of ISTE. So let's see, I've been on this boat for four days, so it's Wednesday, June 28th? Yeah, I, th I think it's Wednesday. No, wait, hold on. Let's see. You know what? I do not know what today's date is because I'm into vacation, but I am still nerdy and geeky and brought my podcasting to go gear with me on my vacation. 
So I'm sitting on deck four of the ship. My feet are up on the rail. I am looking out to the west. So somewhere is the United States. And I just to set the scene for you, the sky is blue, the clouds are white, and the ocean water that's going by is a beautiful shade of blue. You would think I am sailing through liquid sapphire, just to set the scene. And I wanted to bring this along to record one, so you would think, wait a second, why are you recording podcast stuff while you're on vacation? Well, I, I'm, I'm disconnected, so I, I don't have any... We didn't pay for the internet here on the cruise. Kate was tempted and has tempted me at different times throughout the cruise to purchase the internet package. And I said, no, let's just be disconnected. So I have no idea what's going on at ISTE. I have no idea how many emails I have, how many mentions I have on Twitter. And quite frankly, as I sit here, I don't care because I'm enjoying the view. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to share that with you. As I look up, I see one of the emergency uh, vessels. You know, God forbid there would be an emergency on this cruise. That's what I'm sitting under right now. But as I also look up and I refer back to the clouds, I see clouds that are, if I was up on the 12th or 15th deck of the ship, I might be able to reach up and touch the clouds. And Kate pointed this out to me earlier on our vacation that she was up at one point and she felt that she was if she was up a little taller, she'd be able to. So silly me, I asked her the question, have you ever touched a cloud and she said yes you you basically you moron you know when it's foggy out and uh, I thought that was funny Uh, you might think that's funny too but I would rather touch a real cloud up in the sky (laughs) so this vacation has been a blast it's been beautiful weather going down to Florida for a day to Port Canaveral where I didn't get off the ship. I'll be honest. I, I didn't get on a cruise to, to get off in Florida where where I've been. So that was a day where lots of people got off the ship and, you know, went to Disney, went to Universal. I, I stayed on my ship and I spent hours floating in a saltwater pool, which, just to share a little bit about me, as, you know, we're many episodes into this podcast, I, in the summertime, I love to just waste time floating in pools you know it's it's a little difficult when we're at home and we go to family barbecues and things like that because obviously you know being a dad I can't not parent the children uh, so it's it's a little difficult when we're back in normal life to just find time to waste floating in a pool and you know doing that sort of thing the next leg of the trip took us to uh, Royal Caribbean's private island, Coco Cay, which was pretty cool. And as I sit here, Caitlin comes back from wherever she went. She's wearing a new shirt, which is from the WWF. No, it doesn't have Hulk Hogan on the front. It is from the World Wildlife Federation. So perhaps she went and did a walk that they just did on top of the ship. So we are sitting here side by side, feet up on the rails. She looks relaxed, and life is good. Now, she's got the the feet up on the rail, no flip-flops. Probably going to take some pictures with the iPhone. Very good time. And I'm just sitting here cruising, enjoying the breeze. I think I took a 45-minute nap. So it has been totally fun to just do nothing. So I'm back after a couple of minutes break because Caitlin wanted to chat for a couple of minutes. And I tried to entice her to come here on this little segment, but she didn't want to. She said it would be too much work to connect the other microphone. 
So I'm going to be a pain in the butt, and I'll take the microphone I'm already talking into that's already connected. And I just want to say to Kate, hello, Caitlin. Hello. Are you enjoying the vacation? I am now, because we're sitting and not doing anything. I feel like being on a boat, there's too many activities. There's too much going on. It's similar to the elementary school classroom where you have the train schedule of at 9 o'clock we're doing this, at 10 o'clock we're doing this, at 12 o'clock we're doing this. And that's nice, but we're taking full advantage of the opportunity to, again, just put our feet up. Now she's calling for the microphone, so here you go. Well, I was also going to say, we have finally found a spot that's quiet, that there's not a lot of people. So this section of the boat, if I would have discovered this a few days ago, maybe I would have relaxed more while you were sitting in the pool. I could have come down here and just watched the water go by and listened to the water against the boat. But we only discovered that now on day six, and we've got one more day. But I have a feeling the next two days I'll be spending on the side of the boat, down below, just watching the water and the clouds go by. It's peaceful. There's not a lot of people, not a lot of activities, no music, no announcements. I can listen to a podcast, and I actually can relax like we would have if we went to Mexico. Which might be next up on our destinations of places to go and travel to. Again, this is our first cruise together. Uh, I've cruised one other time in my life, and that was when I was maybe 12 or 13 or somewhere in that age range, and that was with my family, and it was a Disney cruise. But So this is the second cruise that I've taken, Kate's first, which she didn't let me forget the whole time, or a lot of the time that it was a lot for her to overcome being afraid to, to get on a boat and be on you know, something out really in the middle of nowhere. But she did a great job. Uh, she didn't get seasick. I, I don't get seasick. I just, you know, roll with the tide, which I, I guess is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for this little segment. Just a little taste of Chris on vacation along with Kate. And let's get back to the rest of this episode. So to get back to what I was talking about before I just had Kate on for a little bit, when we were finished in Florida and after we got done at uh, Coco Cay, which again is Royal Caribbean's private island, which uh, it's amazing how many little tiny islands are all through, you know, the Bahamas and the Caribbean. And this is just their little private island, private beach, where, you know, it was, again, like an extension of the ship, so all the food... Uh, and, and, and drink and all the accommodations, except uh, they, they really nickel and dime you on these cruises. Uh, it was like twenty dollars to get like a, a floating raft to use in the in the water that day. Um, everything, j- just so much of what you think for what you pay to be on the cruise would be included is not. So make sure you look into that if you are planning or if you are a veteran cruiser. I uh, would certainly love to hear your experiences of things you've done. Uh, but after Coco Cay, it was off to Nassau in the Bahamas, where we actually did get off the boat. We explored some of the, the local shops. Didn't purchase much. Uh, Caitlin picked up some, uh, I think it's some of these color-changing T-shirts. I don't know the name of the company, uh, but she got some color-changing uh, hair clips and some nail polish, which is pretty cool. I don't quite understand the science behind it. It is something I do want to look up when we get home to understand more how it works. Um, but pretty neat to see. And obviously exploring some of the jewelry, which I didn't buy. Um, it was fun to see things that sparkle. Always fun. Um, then after that, we actually had an excursion because we had a credit for booking the vacation through Royal Caribbean and we did an excursion where we went snorkeling on a coral reef and here's something cool about that little excursion as they pointed out we were probably I don't know maybe two to three hundred yards away from 
the Gilligan's Island Island. Actually, this is one of three islands, uh, but this is the island that would have been seen in the opening credits of filming, where there you have like an exterior shot of the island they wind up getting stranded on. This was the island that we were near. Now, this is according to the guys running the excursion, so I do not know if they are 100% telling the truth. They also pointed out what they say were the houses that belonged to Oprah, Michael Jordan, uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce, uh, the Elvis Presley estate. So, not sure how accurate that is or if it's just something they talk about to make tourists like ourselves feel like, ooh, and ah, that's what we're seeing. Uh, But to get back to the snorkeling, that was so much fun. Uh, My only problem was that uh, I guess my face or my head is just a funny shape that I couldn't get a good seal on my mask, so my my goggles kept filling up with water. But I did get to see some fish, uh, but then I basically gave up on that and kept climbing back up onto the boat and jumping off the boat into the water and swimming around and just enjoying warm and cool water at the same time. I don't know what it is about the water down here where it's both warm and you get little blasts of cool while you're swimming in the water. So that was just a ton of fun. And another time that Kate overcame fear because uh, she doesn't want fish to touch her, which is weird because she grew up at the Jersey Shore. She grew up going to the beach. But for whatever reason, she does not like to touch anything or she doesn't want anything to touch her and quite frankly I could have died because she wants to hold your hand doing this activity and then if something comes near her she like grabs on you and you know that could be dangerous so at one point I did have to tell her hey you can't just like grapple onto me because we we were were above 18 obviously and we didn't have to wear life jackets so we could just freely float but it's a little tough when uh, another adult just kind of grabs onto you because they're scared. But she overcame that fear. She jumped off the boat a couple of times. And again, just out in the sun, in the water, relaxing, not a care in the world. And that is my biggest takeaway from this entire trip. Not a care in the world. Not thinking about much of anything, which I, I think I've either said here or on Podcast PD that I'm really good at that, just not thinking about anything. Just like, uh, you know, I'm just here, turn on the microphone, I'm recording, just press record, as I always say, and these are truly my genuine, raw, unprepared thoughts uh, on this vacation. So I hope you've enjoyed a little taste of it, and I hope you enjoy whatever vacations or plans you have this summer, and that's all I have for this little segment, so let's get back to the more prepared and polished part of the episode. So I hope that whatever you have planned this summer can rival or even surpass my own vacation as we're here at the beginning of the summer of 2018. But now let's meet this episode's House of Ed Tech VIP, and I'd like to introduce you to Kim Wasmuth. Kim is an instructional technology specialist from Round Rock, Texas. She used to teach math at the middle school level, but now she's doing the instructional technology specialist thing down in Texas. So that is awesome for Kim. You should connect with Kim on Twitter. She is at K M W A S S M U T H. Be sure to tell her that you heard about her here on the House of EdTech podcast. And also be sure to check out her blog, which can be found at aimtobeawesome.blogspot.com. And there will be a link in the show notes over at chrisnessy.com slash 113. So go and check out her blog, where she is chronicling her journey in education and getting into more technology-related stuff. Uh, She actually has a great blog post that I recently read, That is titled, What's Your Purpose with Social Media? And she wrote and published this back in March of 2018. And she hits on in her blog post some of the same things that Kate and I hit on in our conversation in this episode, where 
Kim is talking a little bit about Twitter and how she uses Facebook and Pinterest. So I think that would be a worthwhile read. And of course, I will link to that post in the show notes. So congratulations, Kim. You are the House of Ed Tech VIP. Thank you again for checking out this episode of the House of Ed Tech. And thank you again to Caitlin for, number one, loving me, putting up with me, being an awesome mother to the boys. Uh, And number two, to take time yesterday on a Saturday night after we are home from vacation, less than 24 hours, to chat with me about social media. And I uh, I think we had a good conversation. So we would certainly love to get your feedback. And again, you can keep the conversation going about this. Uh, again, not from Twitter, not via Voxer. Go over to chrisnessy.com slash 113. That's 113. And you can comment there on, on the blog post where Kate and I will both interact and answer any questions or please share your thoughts on social media and how you leverage social media, your purpose, your why. Uh, we would love to know and learn as much as we can about this topic. Now, if you enjoy the House of EdTech podcast, thank you so much for listening. I really do sincerely appreciate it. If you'd like, you can become an awesome supporter of the podcast. And many thanks to the following people who do support the House of EdTech. Thank you to Eric Kurtz from ControlAltAchieve.com, Dan Gallagher, Peggy George from Classroom 2.0 Live, Jen Giffen from the Shooks and GIF podcast, Mark Grindel, Jeff Herb from InstructionalTechTalk.com, Mike Messner, JP Prezavento from JPPrez.com, Scott Titmus, Brent Warner from the EdTech.TV podcast. Thank you to all of you guys and gals for all of your support. Again, if you are interested in becoming an awesome supporter, just go over to ChrisNessie.com slash awesome, and you can start the process there. The next episode of the House of Ed Tech will be episode number 114 and that's going to come out on july 15th 2018 before i let you go i do also want to let you know that the other podcast that i co-host uh, podcast pd along with stacy linus and aj bianco we are doing a podcast listening club this summer where you can join stacy aj and myself in a new voxer group and we're going to be listening to podcasts one episode per week And similar to a book club, we're going to discuss a particular podcast episode in a Voxer group. If you'd like to join us, go over to podcastpd.com slash summerpd18, and that's all lowercase letters and the number 18. Uh, And it's best to do that on your desktop, and you'll be able to get right into the Voxer group. So hope to see you there. Until next time, thank you for learning with me and Caitlin. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. The House of Ed Tech is a proud member of Voice Ed Radio. Voice Ed Radio, your voice is right here. For more great content, go to voiceed.ca. The House of Ed Tech is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. The Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators. Podcasts by educators. For more, go to edupodcastnetwork.com.